This is the Hyundai i30N Performance. It's the Korean car maker's first foray into the incredibly competitive world of the hot hatchback. I've been living with this car for a couple of days now, and you may have already seen what is essentially part one of this video where I reviewed this car. And it is, quite simply, fantastic. If you're looking for a car that is just downright obscene, ludicrous fun, well, in the hot hatch world, the king, I think, is still the Honda Civic Type R. But there's a problem. I haven't driven one of those for well over a year. If I want to make an actual real comparison with this one, well, the only way to do it is to try and find a brand new Civic Type R and drive it back to back with this, which is exactly what I'm going to do now. And here we are, i30M Performance versus Civic Type R FK8. Now, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to completely ignore price. The cars are similar enough that if you could afford one, you could afford the other. However, what I can't ignore is the uh, on-paper difference in numbers. You see, if you're just playing top trumps, the Civic absolutely drubs the i30N. This has got another 50 horsepower and this is a real world 70 kilos lighter. That's quite a bit. And uh, while Hyundai have done an excellent job with the i30N, Honda have been doing this for quite some time. Now, the obvious difference between the two, of course, is in the styling. And there are many people for whom this car is just, well, a bit too much. Now, when I first saw this, I actually really quite liked it, and I still do. It doesn't work from all angles, and I've always been upset about the amount of kind of fake vents and things on it, and I think that's very un -Honda. I don't think that's very cool, but it's got a, a great stance to it. The i30, meanwhile, is nice, and it's kind of sharp and chiselled, and in this sort of golf racing-esque colour that they call performance blue, with the little red accents and things, it's a not a bad looking car. It's not as dreary as a Golf, but obviously it's not the Civic. Now for many people, that may be the end of it. They'll go, nope, could not be seen dead in one of those. This is the jobby for me. Now, I actually wish there was a way to get this car looking just a, a little bit more. And Hyundai themselves teased that with the i30N option. I thought that was something that you could actually buy for the car, but apparently it never really made it beyond the concept stage, and that's a real shame. I'll put a picture of it up for you guys to see, but it made the car actually look a bit like an A45 rival, really. And um, I would love them to produce that. Maybe the next generation will get a pack like that. But before we take the two cars out, let's just uh, walk you through the interior so you can get a little bit of a feel for the, how the cars differ in that regard. So inside here we have a pretty, I'm not going to say exceptional interior, but a very nice place to be. Uh, both cars have an awful lot in common, in this case six speed manual gearboxes, uh, two litre turbocharged engines, nice steering wheels, nice seats. Um, this is a sort of plainer looking interior than the Hondas as we'll see in a moment, but this is a very nice professional decent place to be. Infotainment screen kind of perched up here and you've got many of the same refinements sort of between the two cars. Now the Honda is a much racier sleeker affair with plenty of red all over the place and notice the almost complete absence of leather in here. You've got cloth and alcantara mixed all over the place, red stitching and basically this is pretty much the interior choice. Now this car is a GT spec and I can't really think why you'd buy anything else. And the screen in here, I would say, is a, a little bit better integrated than the Hyundai's. Now, I would say that the switch gear, particularly on the steering wheel of the Honda, doesn't feel quite as nice as in the Hyundai, but you've got this sort of weird kind of retro-futuristic uh, gauge cluster in here, but there's plenty of room. Both cars have got plenty of space in the front, in the back, 
and in the boot, so they are super practical. Uh, other differences include the fact that the Honda is riding on 20s, which may be very important, or may not, we'll see. Uh, whereas the Hyundai, as standard, runs on 18s, and with the performance pack, gets 19s. Of course, the Honda around the back has that very distinctive triple exit exhaust, with the Hyundai being somewhat more modest. Now, at this stage, I'd love you guys to comment below and just say which one you'd actually go for out of the two. They are pretty different in style, but I now need to get out on the glorious open road and find out whether they're actually that different to drive. So I've been driving this one already, so we're gonna pop in the Honda and find out whether it's still the king. So while we get the little Honda warmed up and ready to have some fun, I'll talk you through some of my first impressions after having dropped into this cabin from the Hyundai's. First things first, I feel completely cocooned in this car. I also feel much lower to the ground and one thing if you've seen my original review of the Civic Type R holds true, this does to me feel in many ways more like a fast saloon car now than it does a hot hatch. Fortunately, we've also now got some spots of rain appearing, which is wonderful because that is the Civic's Achilles heel. And let's be honest here, the i30N isn't gonna fare any better either. When it gets wet underfoot, both of these cars will struggle quite a bit. And this car is also one of that very rare breed of cars that just talks to you instantly and just lets you really get on with the business of driving. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I'm just sort of bimbling along here, getting the car warm through, but I'm actually already going rather briskly indeed. When I had this car from Honda before, I, um, I did enjoy it quite a bit on some of the back roads that I know. Uh, it's very easy to gather up quite a bit of speed on uh, familiar roads, and indeed unfamiliar ones, with this car. It's, uh, it is really as fast as it looks, which is a good thing. Turbo lag is still present and I would say actually uh, a little bit more noticeable than in the Korean car. But the auto rev matching works well and this car does pull really hard. Now it's also geared a bit shorter than the Hyundai as well so you're using that gearbox a lot more. Now the gear shift itself is absolutely wonderful in traditional Honda style but I would say that the gear knob in this car is much nicer to hold. It's the classic metal silver ball, reminds me of my Lotus a bit, and it's important, I guess. The wheels in both cars are just as pleasing to hold. The view out in this definitely feels more special. You can see that kind of duct at the front just quite pronounced. Now, in terms of oral excitement, I would say that it's the Hyundai that wins. It's got a real nice character to it, and you have the odd little crack and pop as well. fan of those but and I have judged it rather well in the i30n. Wow. Like America. Yeah somebody actually indicated and let me pass. That doesn't happen here. No that, that that really never ever happens here that's quite amazing. So intimidating is the sight of a Civic Type R with cameras all set up over it. I think the seats in the Honda are definitely the better of the two and again at the moment I'll be honest that the differences between the cars are slim. The ride in this is probably about the same as the Hyundai is in normal mode and um, in, in both cars they're sportier mode in the Hyundai it's N and in the Honda it's R and I, I, I don't really use them on the road I think they just kind of upset the ride as no real point. Both of these cars are equally as good really at doing the boring stuff. In fact, the trip computer in this car is averaging 
almost exactly the same as what the Hyundai was yesterday when I wasn't completely caning it. Uh, I suppose I shouldn't probably admit to the fact that we were doing all the drive-bys with the Hyundai this morning and I got the trip computer down to 16 miles to the gallon. Um, yeah. Alright, one thing I'll say for the Honda in its favour is that in the Hyundai, if you plant it in second, it will start tramping all over the place. Uh, this doesn't, this just gets on with it. And um, I've given this SLK up front a, a fair old lead and um, reeled him in in a few seconds. Now granted, he's going at the pace you'd expect somebody that buys a diesel SLK, but, uh, but still, you know, Oh, get moving. Look, here's the truth. I kind of driven the car enough to, to make a conclusion anyway. I'm just drawing this out because it's a lot of fun to drive this thing. The Civic Type R, as a driver's tool, is still the best of the bunch. But its margin is slight. And I, I really mean that. It's, it's a very, very small gap that it has over the Hyundai. On track, I would be very interested to see how the two do, and I suspect it's there that the Honda might really assert its dominance, but as road cars, both are pretty decent. In truth, I suspect most people will probably have made up their minds before they even try one or the other, and it'll be based simply on looks. And that's fine. Whenever you're buying one of these cars, I think the first thing you do is you gotta look at it and want it. Stay. For beating up your favourite back road though, the Civic is epic. But what the little Hyundai has done, and I can't believe that they've managed this on their first outing, and it is an incredible task. They haven't dethroned the Civic. They've given it a bloody nose. But what they have done is rendered the Golf GTI entirely redundant. I'm sure some of you might be saying, well, actually the Golf R already did that, and the Golf R would be even quicker than the Hyundai. Yes, it would, but it would be even more money again if we start talking about sticker prices. And uh, it exists in a totally different realm. You know, the Golf R really is a car that we're going to talk about in relation to the M140, the A45, those kinds of things. It's a, it's a different car entirely. This car and the Hyundai, they are cars you should compare with the Golf GTI, Megan RS, that kind of thing. And it's a joy to be driving one of these again. But if I owned that Hyundai and I got back in it now, I'd still be damn happy with what I bought. So there you go. There's my little two-part special on the i30N. Hope you enjoyed it. See you for the next one. Bye-bye.